we are now going to make an example of a, a Tetra radio network planning. Uh, to start with a few base stations placed uh, by the radio planner manually and then continue with automatic uh, planning and uh, end with uh, frequency assignment to the newly created network. So let's uh, place uh, a Tetra base station near this uh, town. I right click in the map, select new station and TX position and RAP makes use of predefined station templates. I will use a Tetra base with 48 meter high antenna. So the frequencies are predefined for this station. They can be changed very easily by selecting from a channel plan but uh, we will stay for this case we will stay with with the selected frequency but here the operator can select from the predefined channel plan uh, transmitter data is predefined for the template uh, the antenna in this case is an omnidirectional antenna in the horizontal plane and in the vertical plane the radiation pattern looks like this. So we will stay with that antenna and the configuration for that base station. So here uh, this single base station is listed. Uh, now we will perform a coverage calculation around it. There are several settings to the uh, coverage predictions. The received power is the one mostly used for, for Tetra. I make the initial selections here and these settings are remembered uh, for the next times I make these uh, calculations. So the calculation runs now and it is ready. Uh, the result appears here in coverage results. And here it is. I right click on it, select visible. So that's the calculated coverage for this uh, base. The map display uh, with all the colors uh, is not so suitable when uh, displaying uh, color coded coverage results. So I change the map display to be a grayscale instead. So there we are. Uh, the colors represent different uh, received signal levels. Uh, I calculated downlink uh, transmitting from the base receiving uh, in the mobile and minus 106 dBm for the red color represents the sensitivity level for some planning margin we would uh, uh, need uh, uh, some 12 dB or so, 10 to 12 dB perhaps. So the green color represents the downlink uh, predicted coverage. Now, uh, it is a very quick procedure to um, uh, create more base stations and perform calculations uh, for them. So. I use a command here, copy and immediate coverage. Now when I place uh, the cursor and uh, left click in the map, 
a copy of the base is placed there and the coverage is calculated and displayed in one operation. These are uh, single uh, station calculations and when presenting all of them on the map it tends to be a bit uh, a bit busy. Uh, I can merge these into a single composite calculation and show that instead. Now this is the combined coverage uh, for three Tetra base stations and the green color represents a good signal with planning margin, red color is uh, marginal uh, and should not be used as a planning uh, for the planning procedure. <clears throat> uh, what I showed now was doing this uh, manually, uh, the, the radio network planner selects locations, places the base stations, and uh, performs calculations. Instead, now we will do this in an automatic way to optimize the coverage. Uh, <clears throat> so I remove the, the display of the coverage there and will make use of the cost and coverage optimizer tool. Uh, the cost and coverage optimizer has many uh, settings and a quick way to get started is to load settings that has been, have been done before. And for this example, we have prepared this Tetra wrap coverage optimizer settings file and it will automatically place base stations within uh, this map area in order to provide coverage against the Tetra mobile uh, station. It, uh, with a two meter antenna height uh, uh, above ground level. So this is the same Tetra mobile that we used uh, uh, before for the coverage calculations. Uh, uh, the coverage area is around 4,300 square kilometer. Um, that is our required area. Going back to the placement tab, the type of station that uh, uh, we are building is the same as, as used before, the Tetra base station, 48 meter high antenna. Um, we have defined in forbidden terrain that it is not allowed to place the base station in water or in swamp areas because it's difficult to build the stations there. Um, if we want to make use of existing stations uh, that may have been very well prepared and uh, well designed, we can check the ones to use and they will be used together with the new optimized placements of uh, new base stations. But in this case, we do not select because uh, Let's um, totally optimize the coverage and minimize the number of base stations required to achieve coverage. Uh, the cost tab defines uh, cost items. In this case, we work uh, with only one type of station, the new site that is Greenfield, a completely new site with the power and everything to be to be constructed 
and for the demonstration uh, we work with a single antenna height so all stations will have 48 meter antenna height uh, this can be a, a list of antenna heights and each of them with different cost Uh, uh, the optimization takes longer and it is not so so good for the demonstration but it works uh, very well and optimizes also uh, each base station for for the suitable um, antenna height costs for existing stations can be defined existing site uh, that is uh, if if we have a list of of existing antenna towers where the, the new antennas the new bases are allowed to to be installed uh, then they can be introduced into the optimization also the evaluation uh, tab uh, that is where we make settings for selection or propagation uh, model this is a terrain dependent model it is the same that we used before for the terrain dependent coverage uh, calculation direction we will do uplink uh, because uh, in this situation it will be the uplink transmitting from the mobile receiving in the base that is the limiting uh, range factor but the optimization is done for a received power of 10 db above receiver sensitivity uh, so this is a planning margin in order to have a good uh, high probability uh, location coverage and 10 db is, is a reasonable margin for for this environment uh, the solution will uh, go for a uh, minimum coverage 95%. So at least 95% of the desired coverage area will be covered with a received signal that is 10 dB above receiver sensitivity. That is uh, the optimization condition. Uh, we could do uh, a maximum cost criterion uh, that is when uh, a case when we have a fixed budget and have been meticulous about defining uh, the cost items then uh, it will uh, come back with a response of uh, uh, best coverage highest area coverage that can be achieved within that limited budget so uh, when i press ok uh, the calculation starts and uh, there is a progress meter here when it has come to about 25 percent it starts uh, uh placing uh, candidate base stations in many many locations good selections of uh, potential base station placements it shows the progress in the map perhaps it's a bit difficult to see it's a black circle moving around uh, there it is now and uh, this uh, uh, continues until about 79% when uh, another phase in the optimization is, is uh, starting. <clears throat> so basically this optimizer works in a way of, of selecting uh, from a list of uh, existing sites, if we define that, existing base stations and greenfield sites calculates many many coverage plots around that and makes an optimization to minimize the number of of base stations or um, actually minimizing the cost uh, for the base stations it came up with a need for 30 base stations 
uh, the cost was not uh, very uh, accurately defined here, so it just says uh, two for each base. If we had had different uh, antenna heights um, and other uh, different criteria, different definitions for, for the base stations, uh, the cost would have been variable here. The covered area is 95% and that is exactly what the requirement was. Uh, pressing generate stations generates the stations for further calculations and further analysis. Um, I will use the default station type, which means uh, that we will not change the station to create now from what was uh, used in the optimization. Otherwise, we could uh, introduce sectorization here, uh, but that is not a common case in, in Tetra anyway, so we'll use the default types there. Uh, the list now shows the 30 uh, base stations. I'll take away the ones we created manually and show these on the map. So there they are. Um, the map can be changed uh, also to take away the, the image map. Uh, and that is sometimes good when we really are not interested in in uh, uh, the cartographic features. Uh, just we are just interested in some course map like this. Okay. Now these base stations are all identical. They all use the same frequency. And they cannot do that in a real network. So a next step can be to uh, optimize the frequency assignment for uh, low interference. That is done by using the frequency assignment tool. And in this tool, we first make a selection of <clears throat> of the channel plan this is a, a prepared uh, a tetra plan with uh, 20 uh, paired frequencies in the 390 megahertz band and we make uh, settings uh, for for uh, the propagation model and so on. And now we will make the same settings as we did for the for the um, uh, coverage optimization. We used 10 dB uh, planning margin. And uh, here, we will limit the server range. 15 kilometer is, is uh, probably reasonable because the, the, the separation between the base stations is something like that. It is, uh, on the average, it is lower than 15 kilometer. And pressing OK, then we have made the settings. All these settings uh, can be configured and remembered. And pressing Calculate, We'll then perform calculation now of all interference paths and wanted signal paths in this network of 30 base stations. So there are <clears throat> a lot of calculations uh, uh, going on now to, uh, to position the mobiles at worst locations from uh, an interference point of view. Uh, within the limitations uh, that we gave for the blocking calculations, such as uh, maximum 15 kilometer uh, server range. Now it is ready. 
and uh, to uh, perform the following uh, optimization of the frequency. Now all all use the same frequency, so we will remove that. Remove. The existing frequency on all stations and then perform the automatic assignment. And now uh, the assignment um, uh, is ready. Uh, there was no message of a, a warning there to that, that some base could not be assigned, so it was a successful assignment. Um, the uh, chart at the bottom uh, of the window here indicates the uh, the margin. Uh, a red color indicates that if we try to assign that frequency, uh, there will be interference. A yellow indication, yellow color here indicates that that frequency can be assigned uh, and will not give interference. Blue, which may be a little difficult to see where I have the cursor now, indicates that that is the frequency in use by the station that uh, is marked in the upper left list. So if we have a look at the details for that frequency, um, it has a good signal to interference uh, condition, a low interference level. If we have a look at the, the adjacent frequency, it is interfered with, still positive signal to interference ratio, but Tetra requires uh, better than 12 dB. And uh, the, the, this means that it is not available to assign. The assignment can be done uh, once more to, uh, if we want to have two frequencies for each base. Uh, so let's assign another frequency for each base. Now it takes a little longer because it has more, more considerations to make uh, since there are already are 30 frequencies, one for each base. Now it adds one more to each base totaling uh, 60 frequencies. Okay, um, then closing this window invokes this question, would you like to save your assignment? Yes, we will do that. Now these assignments are saved to the base stations. So uh, if we click on, on the station now, we can see that it has an assignment. We can have a look at, at the way uh, the frequency spectrum is used by using the spectrum viewer. And uh, it shows uh, now the calculated field strength at, uh, at the cursor position where I click in the map. It can be changed to display number of stations per frequency. So for instance, uh, uh, at most we use uh, six stations per frequency and uh, clicking here for, shows that that frequency, for instance, is is used by the base stations that now are indicated in the map. So this is a very optimized network. It uses the minimum number of base stations, that means lowest cost in this case, to cover the 4,300 square kilometer of desired area. And it uses the minimum spectrum, the minimum number of frequencies uh, that is required to, to um, uh, fulfill the interference uh, and quality of service criteria.
this project can be saved for for later use or further further analysis so i save this into on hard disk and that finishes uh, the tetra coverage optimization and uh, frequency assignment.